I don't know, she kind of looks like that girl from Bob's Burger. <laughs> oh my God, with her little, uh. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's review is going to be a little bit different because as you guys know, I've been trying to kind of like transition into doing more set based reviews as opposed to doing one doll at a time because I feel like the set based one do a little bit better than just one doll but this is you know a special exception because this doll is pretty 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 new and I haven't been able to find any of the other ones anywhere and this one I only got from my friend Serena also known as Lee Sna and dolls or whatever because she ordered a couple on Amazon and got lucky and got them when they were still in stock and this was one of the ones she didn't like and I was okay with so she's here Twyla's here and I'm so excited. We don't have a box for her, but that's because I didn't want to pay stupid shipping. But Serena did provide us with some fun little clips. So here they are. Ooh, it's some artwork. Ooh, Twyla's in a box. Ooh, there's her name. Ooh, there's her accessories. Ooh, there's... No, wait, that's not her pet. I lied. Oh, wait, no, there's her pet. Her pet's down there. Ooh, she needs her little bunny hat and... Ooh, she loves her pop tart and ooh, she loves hiding in the shadows. All right, now that we have seen the box and everything, the first thing I wanted to do was a little height comparison. So I have the tallest body we have, the standard body, Twyla and Draculaura. I think Draculaura is just like the teensiest little bit shorter. So she still remains the shortest and Twyla is what I'm gonna call the new little sister body. And yeah, it's a little bit taller than Dragon Lawyer, so yeah. Also, to specify, just to clarify, these stands do not come with the dolls. I got them all on AliExpress. It's like 50 cents for a five pack or something like that. So if you need some stands, you know where to check. So we get a ton of accessories with Twyla. The first thing we have is this eye mask. It has some bunny ears and cobwebs. And you know, of course it's asleep. These are just the cutouts. So if you put it on her, you're gonna see her eyes, which is interesting. And this is like a rubbery plastic, so similar to maybe Polly Pocket clothes is like what I'm getting, LOL clothes, like that type of material. That's that's what it's giving. Here is what the eye mask looks like on the face. It's a little cursed <laughs> because you can see her eyes. I do have to say it's kind of sad that it's plastic. I do like the like added features that it being plastic gave us, but one of my favorite things about the original Dead Tired was the fabric mask, so. Even if they were all the same pattern, I just really liked, I really liked them, I don't know. The next thing we have is this little Spookachino. It's a purple cup, it's kind of shimmery. There's some stars, stream midnights. And then we have a little like tea bag. Oh, maybe it's tea, maybe it's not a Spookachino. And it has a little cobweb on the lid. That looks like it opens, it sure does. I think that's cool. I mean, like it doesn't really serve much, you know, purpose, but all the cups have been able to open so far in G3, I think, but most of them at least. Pretty cute. Is it hollow on the bottom? Nope, not hollow. Favorite part is definitely this little <laughs> Pop-Tart. It's so cute. It has little cobwebs in the frosting and it's been bitten, so it's very scared. Uh, not only does this read, like, oh, look at all that detail on that sculpt. That is so cool. Not only does it read, you know, as a Monster High item because of the face, but it also reads, like, the old Pop-Tart packaging. I don't know if they still do this. I haven't really paid attention in a while. But the old Pop-Tart packaging used to have them screaming on it, and it reminds me a lot of that. Super cute. I love it. We have Twilight's cell phone. See, she doesn't really have a skelet, so she doesn't get to have that. But look, there's, like, a little hourglass. Uh, she has music. Whatever that is. I can't even... It's, like... A dog, maybe? I'm not sure. Dog or cat? Well, yeah. I wish these were clearer. I wish it was just a sticker. I don't really like this printing method. I think I've already said that in another video, but yeah, it's a little bunny. A shadowy bunny. Super cute. Twilight has like a quilted bag with a bunny on it again. She really loves her bunnies. Uh, one ear's folded down, little button eyes. <laughs> the funniest little mouth. It does open. It's once again, it's that rubbery plastic. This one's a little firmer though. And there's some purple straps on the back. Looks like there's glitter on it. There's not glitter on the front. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's glitter all over it. I can see some stitches and detailing. It's pretty detailed. Very cute. We have an intro to Talesman's book. I think, oh, it's got little cobwebs on it. That's cute. I feel like I know what a Talesman is, but I also feel like I don't know. So 
<laughs> I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it looks like there's Frankie, Deuce, Claudine, Draculaura, Laguna, and Cleo on here, so interesting. See the way that the way they print it is so weird these days. She also has this little hair clip that looks like a doorknob. Very cute. I wish she had two, but I mean I guess I'll take one. It's kinda random, <laughs> for sure. That it's not just on her. I remember seeing it in the box and I thought it was something completely different in the blurry pictures. So if you know, you know. And the last thing we have is Dustin. I don't feel like grabbing the original Dustin to compare. I think, you know, as G3 goes on, I'm not gonna sit here and compare everything because I'm looking at these as their own dolls at this point. But you can see like a little gray spots on him. Is that just the light reflecting him? Oh, that's just the light reflecting. Okay, he's like purple and you know, he's a dust bunny. So he's pretty textured. And that fuzz, or I assume he's still a dust bunny. I'm not sure, I don't have the back of the box in front of me, but he has little blue button eyes. He looks kind of scared. I don't know, he's very, he's cute. He looks very Alice in Wonderland to me, for sure. That's what I'm getting. Uh, this one is a solid plastic, so it does not feel like a McDonald's toy, which I appreciate for sure. Moving on to Twyla, she really has not changed much at all from her other iterations. Uh, I think the head sculpt, is almost exactly the same, just scaled down from the pictures I've seen. And of course the ears are more prominent now. It looks like she has a little dent in her face from her earrings. So that's something to look out for, I suppose. But anyways, she is wearing all purple eyeshadow. There's no blending or anything. It's just one solid garage door moment. But you know, that works for her. She is younger than everybody else. And a shimmery purple lip. Very pretty, reminds me of Brad's. Love it. And thick brows that match her hair. Looks like there's glue on her face. Her face needs a little bit of a washing, I think. Um, maybe that's just because of her feature, but I almost thought her eyes looked a little pixelated, but I think it might just be because of the feature that it has. Uh, Twilight's eyes do glow in the dark. Let me see if I can get it to show up on camera. Okay, so that actually shows up pretty well on camera. I'm shocked. I remember having such a hard time getting it to show up with the original one, but these ones, like this one's eyes glow a lot more and I haven't like held her up to the light very long to like, you know, activate it or whatever. But you can see she still has that feature. Still a really cool feature. I love it so much. It's just so cool. Twilight is wearing Mattel's famous paper satin fabric on top of her head. And it is in a purple color with a little bunny ear design. Super fun. Uh, it's kind of like, very kitty, but it's also something I'd probably wear like in real life, so I can't say much. Uh, because I love stupid stuff like this. It's just a little hood, and it has a little tie in the back, Ooh, which you can't see. There we go. A little tie in the back, that's how it comes on and off. You can just untie it, and boom. It comes off her head pretty easily, like without untying it too, so if you didn't feel like tying it again. There you go. Everything looks nice and with the sewing, so yay. Twyla's hair straight out of the box does leave a lot to be desired. It is saran, but the way it's been like treated and like processed or whatever you want to call it, like it is just, it feels gross um, and it looks gross right now. So hopefully it reminds, it's very like, it's a little bit worse than Laguna, honestly, but we can definitely fix that. She does have a side part on her head. Uh, there's a little ponytail right here that is pulled up. And then we have curly bangs and we have a teal and purple hair color, same as always, except now it's a little, it's a little more vibrant, less uh, like dull and less pastel looking than it used to be. And it's pretty decent length, although it's very like, ooh, this looks, mm, mm, oh, I was warned. I was warned about this. Twyla is wearing a pair of spider earrings. They're just a big circular spider with little cobwebs in the center. And if you look closely at her ear, you can see that there is cobwebs on her sculpt in her ear. And I think that's really freaking cool. Love it. I really love it. Here is Twyla's outfit. This is very reminiscent of both of her signature looks from the other generations. We have a purple sweater with some pink and blue smoke effects going on or smoke prints. We have a little blue belt in the center here with, um, was it, what is that like a, a doorknob thingy? What are those called? I don't know what they're called, but you know, like you hit it on the door. And it has a little bunny with the same smoke effects. There's a little bow right here in the middle, although it doesn't really look like a bow because this needs to be like up the way it's like sitting down. It's a little sad looking. And it just goes over the shoulders with some blue trim. This fabric is nice. It's, I don't know what it is, but 
it feels nice. Um, it reminds me, it's not like the same athletic material that Frankie and them had in Ghoul Spirit, but it's similar to that, but it's less, it's less sheer. So yeah, and that just Velcros in the back, of course. And then underneath that, let's take a look at her skirt. Is uh, falling down a little bit, it looks like. Oh, 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 there we go. So it's just a cute little, um, is that high-waisted? Not really. I mean, it kind of is, kind of not high-waisted. It's a black skirt with two layers of frill down at the bottom with a cobweb print, and there's spiders crawling in it. And once again, that Velcro's, oh, no, it doesn't. It just, it's a stretch, stretch fabric. Cool, okay, that's fun. Twilight is wearing a little, uh, I want to say, boogie sand. I don't know if that's what it's going to be called in this generation, but a boogie sand bracelet from Haunted is what it looks like. And it has little beads on it. You can see on her arms she does have some smoke details, uh, like shadows, and then like a just straight up pink hand. I'm not a huge fan of the hands just being straight up pink because they look a little like gloves to me. And I'm also not huge on the shadows being pink as well. I don't really think there was any reason to change it from gray to pink. I know pink sells better or whatever, but there's plenty of pink on this doll as is, and she's literally purple, so I think it would have been fine. And I also think the fact that we've already gotten a Twyla doll in the first, what, nine dolls of this generation goes to speak, um, that's not, that did not sound right. Goes to show, that's what we're going for, that's what I was trying to say, goes to show that Twyla was probably a pretty popular character anyways, so it just seems like a weird change to me, but yeah. I also kind of wish she had a different hand sculpt, maybe smaller hands or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's just me saying things, really. <laughs> Here are Twyla's shoes. We have a cute little purple platform heel moment going on. There's a little window on the heel part. We have these black soles, purple cobwebs, lots of lots of straps. They almost remind me of demoni demonias. I don't know if that's actually what they are, but it's just when I see straps like this, that's what I'm reminded of. And those windows are on both sides of the heel, on both heels. And underneath, we can look at the engraving on the bottom of the soles. We have a little cobweb with Twyla and Dustin. So it's just like so unnecessary, but so cool. I love, I love that. These feel very monster high and I really, really love that because some of the shoes have not felt very monster high to me, but these, yes, absolutely. Please keep this up. And we can also see that she continues to have the shadows on her legs, just like her old doll. Um, I'm not super sure how well these are going to hold up considering the Frankie situation and the Laguna situation. So I might go ahead and put some of this matte varnish over them later or i don't even know they're kind of glossy so maybe i'll use gloss but it's just this liquitex varnish there's a gloss version and there is a matte version that so far has been holding up very well on my other dolls i put it on all of my frankies and my lagunas so yeah that's my solution for now Alrighty, everyone so that is going to wrap it up for twyla's review let me know what you think of her below in the comments. I think they did a really nice job with Twyla. She feels very true to her character while also feeling brand new. There's a couple features I'm not huge on, like the pink hands. Actually, I think that's probably the only thing I don't really care for. Everything else I'm pretty okay with, yeah. Maybe like a cute little pair of lace socks really would have set her off. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I did put the skirt over the sweater as opposed to the other way around, and I do think I prefer the look. I'm also kind of confused as to if this is going to be her casual, like, core outfit or if this is going to be her creepover outfit. I'm not too sure. I think it works for either one, but the shoes obviously don't really work for creepover. So that's where I'm like, maybe it's her signature outfit. I'm not sure. I think introducing her in creepover was genius. I mean, obviously, you know, she's the boogeyman's daughter. Duh. I will say on that note, though, they... <laughs> On the box, they don't specify what type of monster she is, so that's you're gonna have to have prior knowledge of generation one and two to know who she's the daughter of. So, I guess they're not even really doing daughter of anymore, but who, what type of monster she is. So, I think that's interesting for sure, but it, it's not like that information's super hard to access. So, anyways, I'm, I'm going off. 
on a tangent. Let me know in the comments below what you think of her. I already said that. If you like my content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit the bell and all of that fun stuff, and follow my socials, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!